Number one asks us to draw the image of quadrilateral ABCD when it is rotated 120 degrees counterclockwise around point D. So counterclockwise, remember, is this way. And then point D will be our fixed point or our center of rotation. So when we're looking at um, rotating, you want to make sure that your angle of rotation is the 120 degrees. So that angle of rotation is going to connect the, the original to the image. And remember that each of these triangles is a 60 degree angle. So we're going to want to take and rotate this one kind of two triangles. So this would be one, this would be two. So we're rotating it two triangles around. And a is a little bit weird just because this line going up here isn't quite into the full triangle. So I've got that, I've got this full triangle, and then into the next to get that 120 degree rotation. You can also certainly use um, a protractor to help you find that if that's confusing. And then um, point A's image will be the same distance down that line of reflection. So this one you can see kind of goes through the center of two triangles to get to A. So we're going to go through the center of the two triangles to get to A prime here. Then I'm just going to delete those and we're going to go again um, with B. So here's um, just our starting line and now I need to rotate this. 120 degrees. So this will be a 60 degree rotation since it's that one triangle. Here would be 120. So there's our angle of rotation. And then we're going to rotate B um, down or counterclockwise to that. Now look again, you want to take it to be the same length. And if you're struggling to figure out where the same length is, remember that you could always use your compass to help you set um, a measurement. So let me show you how you would do that. So you could set your compass, you could open it to point B. You could also use tracing paper for this, it's just harder on the screen. So now you could just rotate this down to figure out where B would go. So B is going to be right here. And that just kind of sets your length so that you know um, that it's the same distance. So then this would be where B prime is going. Um, and then we would continue doing that. So let me move this over to C and then do a six, uh, 120 degree rotation. So there's 60, there's 120. You can see C is kind of two triangles away. So that one's a bit easier. So one, two triangles here would be C prime. And then we know that D is the center of rotation. So D is going to stay in its set place. So then I can connect all of these images and get my new quadrilateral. Number two says there's an equilateral triangle ABC inscribed in a circle, meaning that all of its vertices are touching um, the edge of the circle. So I've drawn a picture of this. So let's just label, I mean, it doesn't really matter, but we can label the triangle A B, C, and then the center of the circle is D. So what is the smallest angle you can rotate triangle ABC around D so that the image of A is B, okay? So that A lands on B. So what's the smallest angle? So we want to figure out this rotation angle. So how many degrees is that? So we know that a circle is 360 degrees. And we know that this triangle is split into three equal parts. We only want to go one third of the way around. So that's going to be 120 degrees in a clockwise direction, which they didn't ask for. So the reason they're asking smallest is you could have taken A to B this way as well, but then that would be 240 degrees. So they wanted the smaller one. Number three, which segment is the image of AB? after um, a 90 degree rotation counterclockwise around point P. So I've identified the fixed point on there, the segment, and then we wanna go in a counterclockwise direction. 
So maybe you can see this right away. Maybe you can't, but remember that um, angles of rotation, they will create that angle when you connect the center point to the original and then the center point to the image. And so we want to go 90 degrees counterclockwise. So that's what I drew was a 90 degree angle here. So A is two units from P. So A's image is going to be two units from P. Okay. So we can see then that it's going to be this segment GF. Since B is one, two, three units away, B's image is going to be three units away also. So segment um, GF. Number four, the semaphore alphabet is a way to use flags to signal messages. So this time they want us to take um, the right flag and bring it to the left flag. So again, you're going to have different um, ways you could do this because you can go clockwise or you can go counterclockwise. So I'm going to take the right flag and I'm going to rotate it clockwise 135 degrees. Okay, so rotate L clockwise. 135 degrees around, and I'm just going to call it the shoulder. Okay, so around the intersection of these two flags. So 135 degrees, that's going to set my flag here. So when we rotate this up, it's going to look like this. Now they want this to land exactly on that other flag. So then we're also going to have to end with a reflection over um, the L leg or you could say the left arm all right in number five it gives us two polygons p and q we want to select all of the sequences of transformations that will take p onto q letter a asks us just to rotate p around a 180 degrees so since a is the rotation point or the center point, the angle A and P would have to match the angle A and Q for this to even have a possibility of working, and it doesn't, so this is false. B asks us to um, translate point A to point J, so we will move this um, polygon P so that we can get A onto J. Then it asks us to reflect over line AB. When we do that, it lands exactly on Q. So this one is good. In part C, it asks us to rotate polygon P, polygon P um, 60 degrees counterclockwise. So when we do that, we get this shape. Then it asks us to reflect over line FA. So here's line FA. If we were to flip this over, um, this angle certainly does not match up with the angle it would land on. So A is still going to land on A, and those are not corresponding. So this would be bad. And then I'm going to get rid of this one. All right, so then the next one says to reflect over BA first. So we'll reflect over BA. Then it asks us to rotate 60 degrees counterclockwise. So remember that counterclockwise is this way. So if we were to rotate counterclockwise, again, A is the set point. So this little angle is going to land on top of this big angle, and that is not going to work. And then our final one that we're looking at here asks us to reflect over BA, which actually is that green one. So let's leave that. Um, and then translate by directed line segment BA, which means we're going to take and move point B down to A, and we will see that it lands exactly on the one that we wanted. Number six says, draw the image of figure ABC when translated by directed line segment U. Label the images as A prime, B prime, and C prime. And then explain why the line containing AB is parallel to A prime, B prime. So first of all, if you're going to exactly um, do this, then I would um, kind of extend this line BC. 
so that you know that you're staying on that line, then you can take your compass and open it to the length of this um, vector so that you're able to mark off exactly how far B prime is gonna go and then exactly how far C prime is gonna go. So that gives us um, that B prime landed on C and then that C prime is here. And so let me just um, get this drawn in. So here's that new um, segment. And then we also need to um, figure out where A is going to go. Now mine, so A is going to go somewhere here. So this is how far that vector is, but we need it to not rotate at all. Okay, so we need it to not spin at all. And so what I'm going to do is then I'm also just going to open it up and see how far A is from B so that I can go to B prime and mark exactly where that's going to happen. So I did a marking for the vector and I did a marking for how long AB is so that I know where A prime is going to go. Now, if you have tracing paper, you could obviously trace it and move it over um, like that as well. Um, but there is the angle. Then how do we know that this line that contains um, AB is parallel to the line that contains A prime, B prime. And that's because of the definition of translations. So we know that translations um, take lines parallel to it, to the line or to itself. So it's either gonna make it a parallel line or it's gonna be the exact same line. And you saw that with BC to B prime, C prime, they're the same line. So this one took it to a parallel line since the vector was not on the actual line segment AB. Number seven, there's a sequence of rigid transformations that takes A to A prime, B to B prime, and C to C prime. That same sequence is going to take D to D prime, labeled D prime on this image. So we know that um, D is on line segment AB. So we know that D prime will be on line segment A prime B prime, and it will be in the same relative position. So a little bit closer to D, you could certainly measure that and figure out exactly how far it is away, or you can just sketch it. But D prime would be approximately right there. 